Whoa, okay. Hey, you guys. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And it's so awesome to be rejoining you guys here on AYP, the critique show. This is something we're we're really excited about. We're stoked, as we say in California. I love looking at your work. I Hopefully, I'm giving you advice that helps you improve your photography. That's my total goal, is not to just throw out random pieces of, you know, this or that, but to give you the one thing, if needed, that you could elevate your photography with. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, listen, you guys know who I am, but I am Mark Silver. I'm an author and photographer here in Carmel, California. And we unfortunately still have fires burning. There was a bright orange sun that came up this morning, which is not really what we want to be seeing. So I, boy, I surely want to applaud our firefighters and our first responders and everybody who's out there on the front line helping us with the very, um, the many different things and challenges we're dealing with. But our show should give you a break from that. And we're going to be, you know, obviously focused on creativity and talking about how to advance. And this show is, again, brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo. I love these guys. I've been working with them for years. They produce amazing stuff. Here's some of their specials that you can check out. Uh, 25% off on panels and plaques. If you wanted to make a, a plaque or a panel or something, 25% off. Here's another one. 25% off on fine art prints, which is probably more to our point here. You guys can get 25% off. Make one of those prints. Hey, that arch, I was there a couple of weeks ago, and you may have seen my... Uh, shoot of, of Jan was standing right there. That's a little bit of a freaky spot because you can't tell, but it on this side uh, is, you know, kind of drops off, but the other side drops off really steeply. And you got to kind of keep your, your head together when you're walking out there. Uh, thin wraps are cool. I actually have one of these. They're, they float off the wall and it's a cool look, frameless, there's different finishes you can get, 20% 20, 20 off on that, and you get 25% off on your first order. So listen, you've heard the message from me, from Dan, from Bob, you got to make prints. That's the heart and soul of photography. That's why, you know, we do what we do to get our work out there, show it to the rest of the world. So take advantage of our friends at Bay Photo. Okay, Jared, are we ready to launch into our first critique? Yes, we are ready. Uh, we've, got our, we've got our first one. I chose a photo from our friend, Chicagoland Jared. Wow. Jared. Uh, and so just a little bit of background on this. Um, they were meeting up for uh, some... He met up with another photographer for some street photography, I believe. And he said that he he shot this in black and white profile... Yeah. And he had another one that was uh, color, but he said that the woman here on the left had a very bright blue jacket, I and see. it distracted too much from the main subject. So in the end, he decided to just go with black and white. You know what I like about it, Jared, is uh, both Jareds. I <laughs> like the fact that it leaves you asking questions. And, you know, that's a powerful way to create a photograph. Bob Holmes talked about that. You know, if everything is sort of displayed and you go, oh, okay, I get what's going on, it, it's a little too literal. But this photograph, I, first, you know, your first impression is, wait a minute, what are these cops doing? What's the wedding dress? What's the girl with the mask all about? You know, there's a lot of question marks here. And again, that's a really powerful way to present your images. Uh, I I really don't have any, you know, the only tiny little thing I might do is I might just crop this edge a little bit um, just because there's this stuff over here. I mean, it's a really tiny point. Maybe just bring it over to this pole here uh, as a as the edge. Um, but otherwise, you know, you you 
capture them in motion, which is great. They weren't just standing still. Uh, you know, these, I don't know. Again, I don't know what's going on here. This one, one cop is talking to this one. It leaves me asking questions, which is great. So bravo. Good job, Jared. Who's next? All right, we keep, got one. I saw that he was in the chat. So we've got uh, Fernando has a really interesting one. I like this one a lot. Oh, wow. Good job, Fernando. You guys are amazing. Look at this. Boom. Okay, I got nothing. No, no, no improvement to mention here. You've got a, a powerful image of, again, questions. There's questions that are unanswered, like what is that tool? What's he doing on the floor? <laughs> He's looking up at the camera. I, I love it. That's a great image. Boom. All right. Now we've got <laughs> one here from Bob Kappa. Bob, we just talked yesterday. Okay. So we've got a slow shutter speed, night, not, you know, it's a tool that we, I like to use a lot too. Um, again, that asks questions. You guys are all on the same theme here. I like it. It's, it's like, what, what is going on? What's this question mark? I don't know what this is. That's my first question. I don't know if that's something, it's sort of floating and hovering within the umbrella. I don't know what it is. I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, obviously you intended the motion, so that's you know cool. That's done on purpose. A tiny, again, tiny little thing. I'd probably just crop this off because you don't want your eye being pulled away, and it pulls my attention just a slight bit. Just this this little corner. One thing. Um, you guys always scan the corners and the, the edges of your frame because that's where your eye can get pulled away. This is an easy fix. You just crop it. Uh, you know, Bob Holmes is, is a little more strict about it. He says, always scan the edges while you're in camera. I mean, many of us like to crop in camera. I uh, Listen, I do plenty of cropping in Lightroom and Photoshop, but that's the only thing. Bob, I would just, I'd crop off this tiny little bit in the bottom because I feel like it's just pulling my attention off. And that's just something to watch for, and you can easily fix that. Uh, we want our attention on the girl. The background is another layer of something going on with umbrellas. It's a hot day, I assume, or maybe it's been raining. But uh, good work. Easy to, easy to make that one little change. All right, who's All next? All right. Uh, I've got one from uh, Noem. I think that's how you say it. And this one, I believe, was a Toronto lakefront was the caption that they gave with it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> nice black and white work. Um, first thought, just from a technical side, <clears throat> I'd like to see more uh, deeper blacks, deeper whites. I don't know what processing editing process you're using but i highly recommend if you're not using it use dxo silver effects pro we did a show with doton sagai i've been using that that software for years and years it will allow you to get a much deeper range and if you guys are familiar with ansel adams he created the zone system where you have a pure white and a pure black, and that's um, it makes an image pop. So that's just one thing. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you could let us know how you, uh, how you did process it. If you just processed it in Lightroom or Photoshop, you're not going to get that same depth. Um, okay, so that's just that. From a composition point, I'm not sh sure where my eye should go. Uh, I've got the ducks on the row, you know, lower right hand corner. I kind of look at them. I look at the sailboat. So it's a little bit of a split kind of thing. I don't know where I should be looking. That's uh, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose your message that way because uh, in a in a 
well composed image, your eye, you go right to the point. Now, you can have more than one point. You know, Deanne Fitzmaurice uh, showed us how she has images within images, but this doesn't quite qualify for that because we don't really have, those are all kind of have their own little frames around them. In this case, we have only one major frame. So my only piece of advice here would be put my eye on where you want it to go. If you want it to be the sailboat, which I would say that is the centerpiece here, then let's get rid of the ducks because all they're doing is pulling my attention away from it. All, if you want the ducks to be the, you know, the message here, get rid of the sailboat. You got to go one way or the other. So if you have the opportunity to go out and do another shoot, obviously the boat is different and everything. Try that. Just try to center your attention on one thing. In fact, do that no matter what. It doesn't have to even be this same image. Just Go out where maybe you have more than one thing going on, but put my center, put my attention on one thing. Okay, good work though. Who's next? All right, uh, we've got Amy Douglas. I saw she had kind of a series of these self-portrait images uh, with a crow. Oh yeah, as sort I of saw a theme. It. This is very and so cool. this one was really interesting because it's so different from anything else we've looked at. So I really wanted to. I'll uh, bring it up. I believe this one was called, this one had a specific name. Uh, she titled it uh, Seeking Mercy. Wow. A great image. Again, the theme this morning seems to be asking questions. I love it. That's really, a, you, know, you know, again, a very powerful point. I, I have no idea, right? And which is great. I see hands and feathers, but I don't know what the, What's behind all that, which is intriguing, it's drawing my eyes in. Um, see, this one does not violate that, what I just mentioned about having two different, we have two hands, but it's all one image. It's, it's all integrated into one image. There's no uh, differentiation between hand, the lower hand and the upper hand as far as my eye goes. In fact, the lower hand if anything, because the fingers are pointing up, points my attention to the upper hand. So it kind of helps me. I would say that's the dominant hand is that upper hand. And especially because, you know, it's got a gesture uh, that's either protection or asking for something. It's kind of an opening to upwards. But uh, good, good work, great work, uh, black and white. Uh, really works well. I think if you had left it as a color, it wouldn't have the same power. Um, anyway, awesome. And I think uh, another note on that, because we have discussed this, uh, kind of going back once again to Chris Burkhart, who we mentioned before, about yeah. having a really powerful caption. And yes. I think this is a great caption that you put with it, Seeking Mercy. Yes. And it doesn't do anything to take away any of the mystery either that it's, Mark it's true. talked about. Well, the mercy you can see in the hand gesture. So it, it, it goes along with it and it doesn't give anything away. So that's really no. good. Let me just uh, pick up Jared's uh, note about cropping. Yeah, okay. In a perfect world, we would do everything in the camera. Hey, but you know, that's why we can crop in a computer. And if you can, and it helps you, you know, with your story, do it. That's, there you go. You've heard it from Mark. You take it or leave it. <laughs> okay. All right. So who's next? We've got one from uh, Senhal. I think that's how you say their name. Senhal. Okay. Black and white. And I'm trying to see if there's a caption. Uh, nope. There's no caption for this one. So. Okay. Composition wise, perfect. You've got, you know, you've got the woman. She's my dominant thing. I love the reflection in the sand. There's a kind of a wavy leading line leading up to her with the waves and both actually. She's, you know, both the, the dry sand and the wet water helps my eye find her. That's spot on. Uh, composite or technically I would do a couple of things. One, I'd like to bring those clouds out and you could do that again with Silver Effects Pro. If you're not using it, there's a free download. You guys should get it. I would also like to see 
uh, stronger blacks and whites in it, and that, that Silver FX Pro will will do two things. You will be absolutely amazed at how it'll bring out those clouds. It'll just make those clouds go from that grayness to a, a really deep black and white, and that'll help your image a lot. It'll strengthen it, and and just in general, you know, I want to I want us to see stronger. Uh, both on um, on the black and the white side, Silver Effects Pro, give it a shot. I, I, I'm not just saying that because they sponsored us. They sponsored us because I love what they do. And that's the only way we get sponsors, by the way. I have to know that I, I use their whatever it is, like Bay Photo or DxO or SanDisk, who, whoever, Think Tank. You know, that's how we get sponsorships. I'm already a fan. Anyway, Great work on your composition. Please, um, please try that with Silver Effects Pro. You can lick, you can watch Doton's um, show for a tutorial. I should do a tutorial on it because uh, there's a lot of little tricks that you can use. There's filters in there that you can try, but it's it's, it's a fairly straightforward process. I would like you to reprocess that and post it again if you don't mind. All but, right. But good work. We've got one from Victor. I've seen him in the chat, uh, so hey, I know Victor. he's here. And I really like this one. So, Yes. Awesome. Okay. So many things going right here, Victor. Uh, your subject is framed within uh, all that stuff around him. He's making something. Um <clears throat> But you've got him framed very clearly. You don't have anything like bumping into him. And that was a good job on your composition. Like whatever that that little thing is that's hanging down doesn't hit, doesn't touch or cross his head, which is good. Um, anyway, you you've got it. You've got you've got all the elements. It's framed. Again, a question like, what is he doing here? <laughs> He's got pieces of wood. He's got he's got shavings. He's obviously making something. Again, it, it leaves me asking questions. I love the single light, which I believe is the only light source. Maybe there's another one. Um, creates a lot of shading. Good work. Excellent. I might like to see it as a black and white, but you know, hey, you chose color. That's fine. It, it might. It. I would just wonder if you tried it as a black and white. Uh, again, using Silver Effects Pro might be an idea. I, you don't have to, but because there's some color in that bar, which you know, it it it's over to the right. It could you could say, well, it pulls your eye, but it actually doesn't. I think because it's it's a secondary look. You know, I first see the guy, and then I look over there, and then I see these lines are parallel to that. You know, the, those diagonal lines that you have in there do add vitality. You've got a number of diagonals going on, and that adds the feeling of motion because this guy is in motion. So good job. I think for me, if I could throw in uh, yeah. kind of a two cents, what really helps, I'll use my mouse to kind of direct. So there's the light over here. Mm -hmm. And so even though there is a lot of color here, which could distract in a lot of ways, it's on the other side exactly. from these two. That's so, like, I think if these weren't here, that would be distracting, but because yeah. the light draws your eye, and then, so you kind of go to the light, and then immediately you want to stay on this side of the bar, so then it draws you to him. So, yeah. uh, I think that's kind of why the bar, what normally could be distracting, actually doesn't really distract and just creates another interesting thing to look at. Yeah, good point. There's a lot going on there, which is great. You know, you want to have a not every photograph is going to have a what I was going to say a feast for your eyes and and sometimes you want very simple stuff but this one has a lot of interest for me to look around and check this guy out what he's doing yeah. how he's doing And he's a he's a woodmaker that was in the caption I forgot yeah, to Yeah I see that I see that one. So good good job I love the tonality of it the browns Here's All one right. by Jeremy I saw he was in the chat as well and I thought it's a very appropriate one for the times. It is. Okay. I'm laughing because that's what my beach often looks like too. 
there's the COVID sign. There's the, uh, you know, the police tape. Uh, you know, and it does tell it. It tells a story of our times. It, the red blanket really helps. Um, hey, you got a you got a great image here. Um, you've got. Uh, I wonder if you could ju just this tiny little point. I just feel like you can make the sky pop a little bit more. Just a little tweak in Lightroom if you're using Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, I play with sliders. You know, I pl I pretty much play with every slider you know there's probably you know some some really uh learned person might uh, might have formulas for these things but a lot of times i just move sliders to see what happens like dehaze you know you have to be careful with that because if you slide that too far it really starts looking weird and unnatural but just you know those sliders are kind of like if you're a if you're cooking, you're using spices, like you don't dump on a whole bunch of chili powder, but you know, unless you want your tongue to burn and, and your taste buds to get burnt out. But sometimes a couple of a little grains make a big difference, you know, a little shake of chili powder or salt or pepper, whatever you're using. And, um, Editing in Lightroom or Photoshop is kind of like that. It's just sometimes you just play with those sliders. You've got a lot of control in there. So I'd like that sky to be punched up a little bit and maybe, you know, it would also bring out some of the other colors. That would be my only comment. Otherwise, this is a fantastic image. It's it's story of the times. Well done. All right. Our next one is uh, Mahesh. We've got this photo right here. <laughs> it's a portrait. I love it. It's a dog portrait. And, uh, you know, you're, I do that. I do animal portraits quite a bit. Um, okay. So this is a bit of a split thing though. I, I, I would prefer to either see the woman and know what's going on with her or the dog um, there's a, again, it's just a little bit of a split show for me. You could, um, you get around that by just cropping the dog, you know, that's one way, or just move in on the dog unless they tie together. So there, there are two different things are going on. Although now that I look at it, the dog's face and the woman's face are going in the same direction, which could be, I, I noticed that as well. Yeah, so that could be the point of interest. But I I feel like I need to see that developed a little bit more if that's the case. In that case, maybe standing back, let's say there's a person that we're not seeing in the frame who's talking to both of them or talking to the woman and the dog's looking over. I'm just speculating here. There's some there's something missing that could tie that all together. So I would say either the dog is the main character in this story. Go in on tighter on the dog or, or pull back. You know, Chris Burkhart talks about this, and I talk, I talk about it in, in uh, actually my composition book, not this one so much, but my composition book. You know, you can either go tight or you pull back. And pulling back can give you more of a story. So a lot of times you'll just take both frames and see which one works out best. Like, would you note in the chat if you could, um, was there somebody else that was the, you know, the point that both the woman and the dog are looking at? And yes, the dog and the owner do look alike. That's kind of cool. But again, I, I'd like to see that developed a little bit more. Good work, you guys. By the way, I want to just... Uh, throw this out right now. If you guys haven't heard, I am launching a weekly mentoring program on, on, on not on YouTube. This is a private group where we'll do what we're doing here. But right now I'm giving you, if you're familiar with Baskin Robbins, I should get one and keep it in my, <laughs> in my <laughs> hand here. 
little little tiny spoon that you get at Baskin Robbins or maybe in another country you have a similar thing. Actually, during COVID, they're not doing this anymore, I noticed. You can't get your free samples anymore. Um, but it's a little teeny spoonful. I'm giving you little teeny spoonfuls here. In my mentoring, we will do assignments that you will be following and we'll do follow-ups and we'll do much more in-depth. So just want to let you guys know about that. You should definitely check that out. Okay, good. What's next? 28 um, millimeter. Okay, so you used a 28 in that in that shot. Interesting. Okay. What's next? Who's next? All right. I should say. We've got one from Anderson. All right. Nice color. Nice sky. That's, you know, giving us uh, a, a really warm, inviting look. Um so, you probably know what I'm going to say from my previous comments. I don't know where my eyes should go. I mean, the sky is pulling my attention. The guy standing over to the left is obviously very uh, your subject. But um, I either need to see him closer up and framed more into the, um, the image itself or perhaps farther back, if what would what would help me with that is what Bob Holmes calls punctuation or gesture, either one. Punctuation may be more to the point and maybe more of a gesture. Like if he was holding up one of those lines, one of those fishing poles, and maybe casting it, that would be a gesture. You know, we're seeing this kind of thing would tie the subject into those poles uh, and the sky. Right now, what what's dominating that image is the sky, which is it's a pretty sky, but we're missing we're missing a point of interest. And that um, you know that's just a matter of sticking around and being patient and shooting until you see it. And that's you know that's a lesson we all need to learn. Be patient. Maybe this is a 20 minute photograph and you have to wait until he picks up that pole does something something happens there's going to be a point at some point something is going to happen and that's you just got to wait for it but you know the it's an appealing image it's warm let's just see something that tells us like wow here's here's the dominant thing in this picture all right, who is next? All right, I just saw that they just entered. Oh, wait, uh, I think they made a comment. So, yeah, it said he, he took some more shots from the scene with other gestures, Anderson says. Oh, good. Uh, okay. So uh, why don't you share some of those on, yeah, share those uh, on AYP, AYP Club? Put, put it with this photo, too, so that way we can kind of see them together. Just see be the series. Uh, fun to see, and we'll leave some comments. Um, yeah. Anyways, I just saw Ahmed join us and he okay. had a photo so okay. i want to throw that in and this one had a little bit of a caption i think it was saying so it's a group of women uh singing in al khalifa's field where people yearly celebrate the birth of the prophet muhammad uh he took this october 31st 2019 and it was taken in sudan amazing you know this reminds me of that image that we had yesterday from the photographer that was, um, mm -hmm. y you know, framed by the people around her. I I love it. Uh, I I I love the story. I love the emotion that's obviously coming through. The white, the amount of white is distracting me, though. Um, I, you know, it's okay to have that there, but it's too. It's cutting into the photograph too much. Um, so I would say, from a compositional standpoint. Uh, you would want to either move in closer or perhaps pull back so that we just don't have that amount of white in the frame. And, you know, I can't tell what that is. Is that a, it's something, I really don't know what it is. But I want to see more of the woman and the people around her and less of the white. So I would just say, you know, if you have some other frames, again, maybe post those, take a look through there. If you had moved in a little bit, 
or pulled back. Either way could work. Just, you know, I, again, I just want to see it a little better balance in terms of more about her, less about the, the white space there. But otherwise, it's, it's really a good, strong image. The, the, the people above her with their hands, it's helping frame it. Um, that's my only comment on this one. And if you again, if you have uh, other you know, others in the series, pull them out. Let's take a look at them. All right. Oh, all right. Here's one from Line, uh, hey, Line man. Rinstrup, uh, yeah. and this is they took this on a trip to Egypt a few years back. Okay, so. Clouds, I, again, uh, I'd, I'd like to see those brought out a little bit more. You can do that by, you know, try that in Lightroom, just your, your sliders. It's pretty good, but I would like to see more punch in that, a little more contrast in the, in the overall image. Um, and that's just manipulating those sliders and, you know, s seeing where, where it kind of lands. It might be really interesting as a black and white because there's not a lot of color in it. My rule of thumb, there's a tiny little splash of color. I don't know what that is. That looks like a swimming pool, but I doubt it is. My rule of thumb with whether I go black and white in color is I, I look at it and go, is there something really about this that color really helps tell this story? You know, color is a composition tool in itself. And if there isn't, in this case, I really don't feel like there's enough color in it to, to, to make it pop. But I think it would pop as a black and white. I would like to see you try that. You know, just again, use Silver Effects Pro, which will bring out the clouds. It'll give you more uh, a dynamic range, which is what I've been talking about, and your your strong blacks and your strong whites. Give that a shot. Compositionally, it's interesting. You know, we've got the pyramids. Um, we've got the sky, we've got what's going on below it. So just give that a shot. I think it's cool too, from a, uh, at least a Western uh, experience. I don't think of pyramids often being so close to buildings. I know, that's you know? true, isn't it? So, yes. so at least to somebody that's not as familiar with the area, it does a really good job of being a really striking image because it puts two things together I don't normally associate with each other. Yeah. Let me mention at this point, too, if you guys are interested in the mentoring program and you're interest, interested in how you could get involved in it, the best thing right now is to shoot us an email at aypclub.com. Jared will put that in there. And if you're interested in getting involved, it's going to be a weekly mentorship. Here's the deal. You know, if you're learning anything, cooking, um, any kind of sport, uh, obviously photography, writing, whatever, if you don't really have a strong structure to it that's at least once a week, it's not gonna it's not gonna advance. So you're not gonna get the traction that you need. And so that's why I'm putting this program together. It's a it's a component of learning edu you know, educational steps. Get my hand my educational stuff, which is the classes that I've already put together on video um the mentoring and the assignments i'm going to give you so the the assignments are going to be very specific to you and moving forward in art school that's how we did it you know we we learned stuff the missing ingredient that i had in art school is there was no one text that we were following which is why i wrote this book because i i felt there was a missing ingredient to have one key book on photography that you're following and that's been turned into a course but you've got to have that structure so we would have assignments that we worked on for usually uh, many months and you followed along and developed it and so like if you in your critique there was something that came back like some improvement you needed to make you just did that as the next part of your assignment so that worked out really well anyway aypclub.com. All right, who's next? I hope you guys are enjoying this. All right, we've got uh, Samit Kerr. 
You know, I love immediately the colors. The the light behind her looks like um, <clears throat> it's intriguing. You've got a little lens flare going on. I see that. Um, you know, we don't always have to have a super sharp lens flare at f22. Uh, this one isn't, it looks like. But the light is very intriguing. Like, where is this all coming from? Because she's kind of partially lit up. I guess it's just splashing over. The um, composition is really good. It's just a diagonal in the frame. Very simple. Portraiture. You know, Richard Avedon is the one that mastered this. Google him if, you, if you're not familiar with his work. <clears throat> Excuse me. He mastered the white background and pulled his subjects in and just had them stand in front of the white background, which is kind of what you've done here. And I don't know if that is an actual white background or perhaps just a wall, but <clears throat> it works really well. And that's always a good technique. I like her, you know, her look. She's looking with her eyes, and I like the color splashing, and I like the diagonal. That all works really well together. Good job. Okay, we'll get a few more in here, you guys, before we sign off. All right, here's one for uh, Familia. Oh, get that over. Wow. Okay. I immediately think he's a little ticked off. Uh, I don't know what that is in his hand. Again, this is back to the leaving questions. Good job. Um, what's what's he got in his hand? And is he he looks angry to me? He's certainly certainly got something on his mind. I mean, you can see it in the wrinkles in his brow. There's something on his mind which is good. And it shows image, it shows emotion in the image. And uh, I don't know what he's doing with that thing in his hand, what that's all about, but that's good. That's leaving me with a question. Great, good job, good job. Okay. All right. Uh, Are those scissors? I don't think they're scissors, no. I think I... it's sword, it makes me think, I showed this to a friend of mine and we were thinking it may be from like a Renaissance fair show. Um, oh, that would possibly. be my kind of a guess or some kind sort of, of wizard, historical. Wizardry or something. Reenactment. Yeah, Whatever it is, um, we're asking questions, which is good. And that's, you know, maybe he's about to cut his hair. I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think there's any haircut going on there. So he's he's doing something could be a wizard wizardry or, or something could be but anyway yeah. it asks us it leaves us asking questions which is always a strong point here's one from our friend bob ralph hey bob okay wow that's very interesting there's a question mark um you know what is going on here oh it's a bug wow and it's some sort of plant covered with, I don't know if those are dead flowers or what, but there's a big, big, big bug going on there. Um, yeah, it took me a minute to find the bug, and I think that's probably going to be the most interesting part of this image. So I, my only like point is I would probably move around a little bit to where I got that bug a little more prominent in the frame because it it's it's very hidden because obviously the bug is camouflaging itself so that's your challenge you know if the bug is so hidden that we don't immediately see it it kind of loses its story because I think the bug is the story so I would my only critique here would be uh, maybe you did maybe you got some um, other shots if you did Po go ahead and post those, but I'd probably move in on that bug. I'm saying bug just generically. I don't know what it is. It's a spider, I guess. Yeah, some kind of spider it looks some like. Some kind of spider. So I'd probably just move in a little bit more, Bob, on the on that spider, make it more dominant. That that'd be my only uh, point. Looks like he has a title for it. it uh, he just put it at the chat that it's sunflower with spider. 
That's a sunflower. Wow, interesting. Yeah, it okay. looks like one that's. Uh, I kind of like past its it, day. Yeah, which yeah. has an interesting feel because we associate spiders with a lot of negative things. So, I know. oh, and you can see the spider webs too. I just noticed that. Oh if yeah. You, I would just come in. I, I'd probably just say come in a little tighter on the spider just to make that more like who we're looking at. You know, it's a portrait of a spider. Let's go for it. All right, let's do one more and then we got to sign off. Got a lot of work going on here at the studio. All right. Catching uh, up for my trip. Let's with this one. Uh, we've got a really great one to end off on uh, by Christian. Oh, nice. And uh, this one, there's a little bit, uh, they took, this is from Switzerland. Uh -huh. And so they were visiting some friends. The city is from Bern. Uh, and then, oh, and so then the, these were from Mountain that they took uh, in that region. Okay. So, and they said that the whole mountain was, uh, they weren't lucky that day. The whole mountain was covered with clouds, but it was a nice hike anyways. Yeah, those clouds work beautifully. And we talked about yesterday about, you know, <laughs> do you use Photoshop to put clouds in there or do you just get the clouds? And you got the clouds. You also have very strong blacks and whites. Well done. Bravo. I'd be in interested to know how you process that because it's a good, strong, you know, dynamic range. And, y you know, it it all works together. It works. It works really well as a black and white. And it's a, it's a scenic, it's a, it's a landscape photograph, essentially with that big barn there. Uh, and the, you know, with contrasted to, you have this, you know, obviously man-made rectangular, you know, sloped roof contrasted with the jaggedness of the, of the uh, mountains. And then you've got the plane of where the barn is sitting. So that all works really well compositionally. That's a good job. Great work. So thank you, guys. I hope this helps. Uh, again, I would like to invite you to participate on a more structured basis because that's what it's going to take to, you know, get... Again, think about it like if you're learning a sport, how often would you want to practice and be coached in a sport? Minimally once a week. Like when I was learning, uh, well, I should say relearning when I was a kid, I, you know, we all learned how to swim and I went to slim, swimming classes and whatnot. And as an adult, I decided to really buckle down and get into swimming. And I had a weekly coaching session, not just with me, but it was with a group of people which frankly is better than having one-on-one -on -one coaching. You, you really want to be part of a group when you're doing any, I believe, when you're doing coaching because you don't want to spend a half an hour, 45 minutes on just one person. You want to spread it around because you're going to learn things from what the other people do and see and hear. But anyway, I went to a weekly coaching session and it, it worked really well because during the week, I would work on those points that my coach pointed out, and then I come back to the next coaching session. So weekly is really ideal, definitely not monthly. Monthly is way too long. And getting coached once a year, forget about it. So I hope you guys can participate in that. Uh, send us your email. We'll, we'll send you the info. And that's about it. One other thing, I'm just curious to hear, Jared and I were just talking about this. We're, we're in the midst of really looking at our content coming up. We're in a new quarter here, the last part of this year. I'd love to hear from you guys, your uh, desires, what you would like us to be producing. So you can leave it in the chat. You can leave, actually, Jared, let's put a post in AYP um okay so, so i'll people, write up a post we'll right put a post the there so you guys can post it in ayp like what you would especially like us to be working on i can't i will not guarantee that we're going to take up your ideas but i'd love to hear them and um we're we're going through that thought process ourselves so i want to hear from you guys what it is that you would like to hear about and that's about it, you guys. So, okay. Well, good work. Thank you, everybody, for submitting your work. It takes a bit of courage. 
to put your work out there to the whole world. But bravo, that's sharing. And you've got to do that. You know, we're not just creating photographs for our own um, desire and our own benefit. We want to get them out to the world, which is the fifth stage of the cycle of photography. If you've read my books, it's sharing, getting it out to the world. And that's what we're doing here. We're getting your work out to the world. And please don't ever, ever, ever be discouraged by anything I say, okay? Um, just move on to, if I give you uh, a comment that makes sense to you, by the way, you always have your choice. You can take what I say or anybody else and throw it out. I do that all the time. <laughs> you know, listen, I get comments that I don't agree with on, you know, on YouTube or whatever, and I, if it's true, I'll, I'll own it and go, yeah, you're right. I could have done a better job with this or that. But if it's just BS and I don't agree with it, I just throw it away. You know, that's just the way the world works. And part of being a creator, part of being an artist is learning that yourself, being true to yourself. Does it resonate for you? If not, there's a lot of BS out there. You don't have to take it all in and agree to it. Not by a long shot. I learned that in art school. I didn't agree with a lot of what the instructor said, and I just, but it it taught me that I could stand up to criticism and live through it, and that's actually an important lesson. Okay, um, Jared, do we have anything else before we sign off? I don't think so. Uh, I think the only other announcements I'd like to give. So one, if you're watching this and you're not familiar, the way that you can get your photo up here. Uh, on this show, which we are going to be making this a regular show now. Yes. If you want to be, uh, if you want to have your photo be critiqued by Mark, then the way to do that is to join the AYP Club, which I am putting a link to in the chat. Yes. Uh, so you join the AYP Club and then you post it. And then the easiest way for me to find it, because I gather up all the photos, is to put hashtag critique yeah. on the photo. And then I'm going to grab them. And I know that, you know, there are just so many photos and so many people that want them. So we only do one person, one photo per show. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean, though, that we're not going to grab one for next week. And I do put a preference on people who are here when I pick the photos. Yes. Um, so I look in the chat, and especially if I see somebody pop up, I'll grab their photo and do it. Um, but that doesn't mean that we only choose people in the chat. As you probably saw, there were a couple people that weren't in the chat that I chose their photos. So we try to find a balance. Um, but there are a lot of photos to go through. Uh, we've still got a dozen at least photos that we didn't even get to today. So yeah. I'm saving them. They're in for next week. Uh, but feel free to put your photos there or comment on one of the posts about this show that you're good with me using, you know, any of your photos, if that's the case. Uh, but we hope that you guys really enjoy this show. We, we enjoy it a lot. It's a great celebration of Absolutely. the community. I love seeing your guys work. And by the way, again, one of the advantages on the mentorship program is you will never miss, you know, you're always going to get a critique and it's going to be a follow up. So again, give that some thought. A couple of news items. Bob Holmes will not be with us tomorrow because there is so much smoke where he's shooting up in Washington. They had to move all the shoots to tomorrow. So unfortunately, that's the life of a working photographer. He's not going to be with us. We're looking for stuff that we're going to, we're, we're probably going to post a film from uh, Dan Milner. And then uh, Saturday, Jared, we're going to post my little video about using my car on my road trip and kind of a little yep. short on that and stay tuned for that. By the way, one last announcement. So if you're on our newsletter list, we've moved to a totally different platform, which is way, way, way better. We use for our educational products, a platform called Kajabi, which is where our my courses and Bob's course is uh, lives where you guys can sign up for that. But it also has a really dynamic, powerful email platform, which we've switched over to. If you're not on our email list, Jared, will you put that link there so that everybody yeah, watching it, that. you got to get on that list because more and more we're going to be using it as a, a part of this platform. So we've got, we've got kind of three legs in our program. One is YouTube, obviously. 
The other is the AYP club. And the third component is Kajabi, where our classes live and we're, you know, again, we're using that as our email platform. So that kind of ties everything together. We're building out this uh, really, this really powerful ecosphere that you guys are now a part of, and you're helping us do that. So just stay tuned on that. Well, that's about it. I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, stay well. And remember, say it along with me, okay? Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. Take care. We'll see you soon next week for sure. All right.